this video is a bit of a tutorial on cat body writing and how we can use it and put it into practice in the classroom or at home. So essentially cat body writing is a analogy and a concept to help students and children learn the shape and sizing of letters on their page. So it's something that's quite beneficial once the child's already forming their letters correctly uh, and the focus has moved more towards neatness, tidiness and uh, spacing all the letters evenly. So we take the analogy of a cat and we break that into three different parts. So we've got cat body letters, cat body and head letters, and cat body and tail letters. So the cat body letters are the most common letters and they're the ones that sit between the two main lines. Like the letters A, C, E, I, M, N, O, R, S, U, V, W, X, and Z. Uh, then we move on to cat body and head letters. So these are the taller letters that come right up to the top. It's B, D, F, H, K, L, and T. And finally, there's cat body and tail letters. Um, so these include G, J, P, Q, and Y. So there's a few different ways you can put this into practice. Um, we're going to talk briefly about how we can review the theory before we write. Um, how we can use the cat as an aid on the paper and also using something like letter mastering charts. So a really valuable thing to do before any writing activities in the classroom is to review the cat body writing concept. So one way this can be done is by watching videos. So in the same playlist that you can find this tutorial on YouTube, there is a selection of different videos for each cat body shape. Um, and additionally, there's a video that sums up all of the letters and their placement on the lines. Uh, another idea is to incorporate some whiteboard activities with the whole class before writing. So this could include drawing up the lines, the three lines onto the board, and then drawing a cat and having uh, students point out different parts of the cat. Um, additionally, you could draw some letters next to it and ask someone to come up and point out a cat body letter or a cat body and tail letter. Um, you could draw some letters incorrectly and have students come up and pick which ones are not sitting on the line or not sitting in the areas that they should be. Uh, or you could have students come up and actually draw the letter in the lines in front of the class and have a class discussion about whether it's correct, if it's in the right spot, um, or have everyone collaborate together to do it together. So to review the concept in a bit more of a fun way, there are a few fine motor and gross motor games. So some fine motor games you could do is have um, different parts of the cat laid out and have children place the letter in the correct body part. That could also work on pincer grip and different grips if you put it on counters or on paper or on stickers uh, to incorporate that into the game as well. And another idea could be to make their own cat. So using um, scissors and gluing and uh, pens and pencils, they could customize their own cat and make their own cat while uh, reviewing the idea of the different parts of the cat and where they sit on the line. An idea of some gross motor games can be getting into the different positions of the cat. So um, as you see pictured, there's a cat body position, cat body and head position, and cat body and tail position. Um, these positions could be incorporated into a game like Simon Says or it could be added to something like Animal Fun. Um, additionally, the same concept is used in the fine motor game where you're sorting the letters could be done. Um, each child could be given a letter and they have to group themselves together with the other students that are in the same category as them or they could organise the letters into different places throughout the classroom um, to get everybody moving around. So once you're actually getting up to the writing activities, it can be really beneficial to have a cat letter aid. Um, an example of this is a laminated ruler of the lined pages that has the cat drawn on it, which could be added at the beginning of every page, or um, a cat popsicle stick, which is a really popular and fun way to line the cat up on the lines and help familiarise each student with where they should be placing their letters. And finally, a fun sort of way to wrap up the cat writing experience and another way to make a resource to be sitting next to the student's table is to make something like a letter mastering chart. Uh, so this is something I've done, um, having a box for each letter and then using a sticker system once each child shows 10 perfectly formed versions of each letter, they get a sticker within that box so they can feel a sense of accomplishment um, and it can also be something that they can refer to through their writing activities to see where the letter is um, 
as it's lined up perfectly in the lines in the boxes of this actual chart. So thanks a lot for listening to this tutorial on cat writing. Um, I hope it's something that you can implement in the classroom or at home and something that's really valuable and helpful.